you live a civil life with your Muslim brothers, even if you disagree, your heart should not hold any ill will. The Arabic term is ghil, which is in the Quran. We shall remove the ghil from their hearts. Ghil means you want harm to come to your brother. It is not allowed for the mu'min to have ghil in his heart for his brother, even if he doesn't get along with him. You don't have to get along with everybody. You don't have to be lovey-dovey with everybody, but you should strive that your heart is pure. You don't wish them any harm and evil in this world, much less in the Akhirah. You don't have to be friends or friendly with everybody. There is a minimum. What is the minimum? If you meet them, you say salam. And there's a cordial salamu alaykum wa alaykum as salam. There is no boycotting of the tongue. Then inshallah, you are not sinful. Anything beyond this is good. And the more you go, the better. But the sin, the Prophet said, it is not allowed for two believers for more than three days to boycott one another verbally. So much so that if they meet in the street, they turn around and neither of them says salam to the other. This is not allowed. Seven points from the Quran and Sunnah about how to practically achieve the lack of ghil. One, two, and three are in one hadith. In fact, this hadith is the most explicit hadith about how to remove ghil because it literally begins. Three things shall never allow ghil to remain in the heart of the Muslim. Number one, our Prophet said, doing your amal mukhlis for the sake of Allah. Whenever you do something, don't do it for other people. Do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have ikhlas for Allah, it will help you overcome your ghil. Number two, wanting the best and giving giving nasiha to the leaders of the Muslims. The leaders here means both political and clergy and scholarship. You should not busy yourself with the faults of the leaders. You are responsible for yourself. And if you must, then wish good for the ummah. Try your best to help whatever you can, the leaders of the ummah. And number three, وَلُزُومُ jama'atihim. Stick with the jama'ah of the believers. Be involved with your community. SubhanAllah, one thing I've noticed, Wallahi brothers and sisters, those people who are constantly, constantly creating drama in the community or online, you never find them active in the masajid. You never find them being involved with their local ground community. And this is the reality across the globe. There are some people they have made a name for themselves, you know, creating drama, putting so much fitna out there and their local masjid is unaware of them. Our Prophet ﷺ said, stick with the jama'ah of the believers. Humanize Islam. Be involved with your communities. When you're interacting with other Muslims, automatically you will understand we are all human. I make mistakes, they make mistakes. You will be involved in something which is tangible good, real good, which is in our communities. Number four, the Quran tells us of the ways that you can remove ghil from your heart is to think of something that will be better for you when you get rid of that ghil. What is that? Allah says in the Quran, فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ if you forgive and you try to mend with your brother, Allah shall reward you. You see, when somebody does you wrong, you become full of your ego. I am not going to let this go. But then when Allah says to you, don't worry about you and him, get me involved. I shall give you more than what he took away. You disconnect from the anger against him and you connect with the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't you want the rahmah of Allah? Allah says, don't worry, I will give you ajr directly. So for the sake of Allah, let go of the grudge. Now again, I want to be precise here. This does not mean that you must forgive him on the day of judgment. If somebody has really wronged you, it is possible to have no ghil and still get your reward on the day of judgment. Sometimes people really stab you in the back. They really hurt you. They really do something wrong and you find it difficult to forgive them. And sometimes they do it repeatedly. You know what? It is possible to live your life without any ghil and still get your full ajr from them and from Allah. How so? Go to sleep and have no animosity towards them in this dunya. And say, inshallah, on the day of judgment, Allah will give me what I need. That's it. You've achieved it. Because you know what? When you're bitter, when you're full of anger and rage, wallahi, sometimes, look at the brothers of Yusuf, you will go down a negative path and you will do something you yourself will regret. In this world, live a carefree life. Say, khalas, that's what the day of judgment is for. You go to sleep, clean heart, no ghil. And then you expect, oh Allah, you said, فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى Allah." So in this world, I have no ghil. But on the day of judgment, I want my haqq. Point number five, understand the number one tactic of shaitan is to make these issues between you and your brother a cause of disunity for the ummah. In a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shaitan has given up hope that he shall ever be worshipped in the Arabian Peninsula. But shaitan has one tactic. 
what is he going to get you with causing ill will between you if you go to sleep and your heart is full of anger and rage against another person know that this is shaitan winning you don't want shaitan to win as i said get rid of the anger and if you really must link it to allah and say oh allah you will give me what i want on the day of judgment Point number six here is to follow the prophetic guidelines of not getting involved in ghiba, backbiting, avoiding the gatherings where namima is taking place, having good thoughts of your brother, not having su'avan, minding your own business of the perfection of one's iman is to leave what doesn't concern him. If some news reaches you, think the best thoughts of your brother. Don't get involved in ghiba. Avoid namima. If somebody comes to you with namima, turn it back and say, this is an imam, you're spreading namima. I don't want anything to do with this. Having bad thoughts, an ambiguous phrase is heard. Shaitan comes, you read in the worst meaning, then ghil is gonna happen. And the final point is something that our scholars mention. In fact, one can derive it from a weak hadith in the Muslim Imam Ahmad. You all know the famous hadith of when the Prophet was sitting, he said, a man shall enter from that door was a person of Jannah. And you know, Ibn Umar went and lived with him for three days. And then he found out this was a man. What did he say? Every night I make sure I go to sleep with a clean heart. So from this we get point number seven, muhasaba of the qalb. Check your heart early. If you find symptoms of rage, symptoms of anger, if you think of somebody and your blood begins to boil, well then you had better eliminate this. That's just not healthy for you. It's not healthy for you to have that much rage against somebody who's lowering his head to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, over and over, I'm not saying forgive on the day of judgment, but forgive in this dunya. If you allow the hatred to seep in day in, day out, then you become obsessed with that person. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, when you're driving your car, you're only thinking about that person. I wish he's destroyed. What do you gain? Your life has become miserable, not the other person's. Let go for the sake of Allah and you will live a pure life and Allah Azza wa Jal will reward you for all of that. Final hadith and we conclude. Somebody came to the Prophet and I said, Ya Rasulullah, which person is the best person? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, everybody who has makhmum al-qalb. Makhmum is a bit of a technical advanced word. It actually means clean heart. Makhmum al-qalb, saduq al-lisan. They said, O Messenger of Allah, we know saduq al-lisan is the one who speaks the truth. But what is makhmum al-qalb? What is the one who has a pure heart? Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, listen to this. He has taqwa in his heart. His heart is pure. His heart has no desire to harm somebody. His heart has no desire for vengeance. His heart has no ghil. And we said ghil means your blood is boiling against somebody else. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us pure hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all with qalb salim.